Welcome back to YouTube with Lubelski. In today's segment, we will be performing dilations, specifically focusing on dilated coordinates on a coordinate plane. Please turn to dilated coordinates T2 S1 that is from the math website, Math Worksheets for Kids. Because we about to do some math. We about to do some math. I'm gonna die, 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 dilate coordinates. I'm gonna die, 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 dilate coordinates. I'm about to do some math. Yeah. Okay, welcome back to YouTube with Lubelski. Today we are gonna be doing dilated coordinates. And this is T2S1. So it's our sheet one of this level for dilated coordinates which can be found on math worksheets for kids. If you type in the keywords dilated coordinates, you'll be able to find this. Um, this should be the free one to do extra practice with. If you don't have access to it, just remember $20 for the entire year to get access to all these practice pages. So let's go ahead and start off with number one. It says find the dilated coordinates with the given scale factor. Also draw the dilated image. So there is two parts to this. And to start off with, we're gonna look at the scale factor and identify, first of all, scale factor of two means that we're gonna take this original image and a scale factor of two means two times the size. So that, that parallelogram um, QRSP is going to be double the size when we're all done with this. So whenever we're doing dilated coordinates, this is giving me a space to put my P prime so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna figure out what is my P original? So what's my pre-image where I'm beginning? And in this case, P is negative four, negative two. So I'm gonna to have to multiply both the X and the Y by two to get P prime. Two times negative four is negative eight. Two times negative two is negative four. So P prime is going to be at negative 8, negative 4. So I'm going to go ahead and go, go back to negative 8 and go down 1, 2, 3, 4 to negative 4 and put my new one. And I'm always going to label that P prime so I remember which one I did. This is just the way that I use. There's more than one strategy. You could have done all four coordinates if you wanted to. But this is just one way that I do it so that we can make sure that we're keeping track of all the ones we do. The next one is my Q prime. So I'm gonna do Q, which in this case is positive one, negative two. So my Q prime is gonna be two times one is two. Two times negative two is negative four. And again, I'm gonna plot this over to the right two, down to negative four, plot my point, and I'm gonna make that Q prime. All right. Our next one, R prime, we're going to start with R, which in this case is four up one. And if we do two times four, we get eight. We do two times one, we get two. So I'm going to plot that over eight up two. There's my new R prime. And then we've got our last one, which is our S prime. So my original S is negative one, positive one. So two times negative one is negative two. One times two, or one times two is two. So negative two, positive two, there is my S prime. Our final step now is to connect the dots. If I were you, I would use a straight edge for this, like a ruler, just to make it as neat as possible. I do not have a ruler on my iPad, so I'm gonna do this as best as I can. And there we have our new image. So to make sure that we did it correctly, a double checking is if all, if this is a true dilation, the side length should be doubled now because we did a scale factor of two. So this is one, two, three, four, five units long. My new one should be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten units long. So that proves that this is a scale factor of two dilation. So always double check that. 
Okay, so number two. Number two, I want to check first. That I identify that 0. 0.5 is a scale factor that is going to reduce our triangle because 0. 0.5 is less than one. And hopefully we've learned at this point that if you multiply by one, the image stays the same. If you multiply by less than one, the image was going to get smaller. It's going to reduce. So knowing that will help get me in the mindset that my triangle should be smaller at this point. So again, we're going to start by figuring out my X coordinate, my original Y coordinate, and my original Z coordinate because I have to multiply the X and Y values for all three points to reduce this to one half and plot it accurately on the coordinate grid. So my original X is at the location 6, 4. Now, if you're unfamiliar with how I figure that out, you always go left to right first, which is my X. So one, two, three, four, five, six units. And then we go up or down next. And so we're going up one, two, three, four. And that's where my six, four comes from. So just a little quick intervention and review on how do you find the original coordinates. My Y coordinate is at 16 and up 14. And my original Z coordinate is at 6, 14. So using those, you can use a calculator for this if you're allowed to. Um, I know most of my facts off the top of my head. So right now I'm just walking through it and I'm doing it. 0.5 means to cut it in half. So I, my new X prime, half of 6 is 3, half of 4 is 2. So I'm going to plot 3, 2. And that's my X prime. I always want to label. Half of 16 is 8. Half of 14 is 7. So my next point is going to be 8 up 7. And that's my Y prime. And my final one, half of 6 is 3. Half of 14 is 7. So I'm going to go over 3 and up 7. And that is my Z prime. And then I'm going to use that straight edge to connect them to recreate this right triangle. So make sure that you're always plotting and labeling as you go. The way I can check to make sure I did it correctly is check the side length. So Z to Y is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten 10 units. And then I'm gonna compare it to Z to Y prime. One, two, three, four, five. 5 is half of 10, so I did accurately dilate it. Okay, question number three. We have a scale factor of 1 fourth, and so we're going to do the same thing. 1 fourth is less than 1. We're going to identify that our new image is going to be an en reduction of our original KLMN. So we want to make sure that when we're finished writing it, that it ends up being um, smaller than the one that we started with. And so I'm going to be guiding you through how to use a calculator for this. Some of you may be able to just take one-fourth. Um, when you multiply by a fraction like this, like one-fourth, all you have to do is actually divide by four. But with the calculator, because I know some kids are not as quick with their math facts, I will guide you through how to use the TI30X2S calculator on this one because that's the one I use in my classroom. So my original coordinates, just like we've done with the other examples, K is at 0.4, negative 8. L is at 8, negative 4. And M is at 4, 0. My last one, N, is at 0, negative four. So the cool thing with this is once we figure out what one fourth times four is, we already, we have the answers to a bunch of our different problems. So in your calculator, if you're using one, what you're going to do is you're going to do four and I'm going to write it up here four times. And then to make the fraction one fourth, you're going to type one and there's a fraction key that says A, B over C. It looks like this, A, B over C. When you type that button, it's going to put this little half square 
That's your fraction bar to separate the numerator from the denominator. And then four, and then it will end up, once you hit the enter button, the equal sign, it will give you an answer of one. So four times one fourth is one. Another way of thinking about this is four divided by four is just one. So the next one we're gonna do is gonna be with the negative eight. So in your calculator again, negative eight times one fraction key eight, the ABC button, four, enter, and we should get negative two. Okay, another way to do this is when you're multiplying by a fraction that's one, four, one fourth or has one as the numerator, you can just divide by the denominator. So negative eight divided by four is negative two, and we make sure, make sure we don't lose that negative. So the cool thing about L is that we've already done negative eight times one fourth. So eight times one fourth is just gonna be a positive two. Same thing for over here, we did four times one fourth was one. So negative four times one fourth is gonna be negative one. For m prime, four times one fourth is gonna be one, and zero times one fourth is still just zero. N prime, zero times one fourth is zero. Negative four times one fourth is negative one. So let's go ahead and plot that now. So our first one is over one, down two, and that's our k prime. Our next one is eight uh, over two, down one, and that's our L prime. Next one is over one, zero, and that's our M prime. And the last one, zero, negative one. So that's our N prime. Now, this is really hard to see, but here is my new image. And it is extremely small because it is a quarter. It's a fourth of what it used to be. All right, let's do our last one. Number four, scale factor of three. So the first thing I wanna identify is that my new image is going to be three times the size of what it was. And then I'm gonna do the same thing I've been doing, which in this case, my A original right here is negative one, negative three. My B original is positive one, positive one. My C original is negative one, positive three. And my D original is negative three, positive one. So let's multiply all of those by the scale factor of three. So some basic multiplication facts. This probably doesn't require a calculator for most of you. But negative one times three is negative three. Negative three times three is negative nine. 1 times 3 is 3, 1 times 3 is 3, negative 1 times 3 is negative 3, 3 times 3 is positive 9, negative 3 times 3 is negative 9, 3 times 1 is 3, and now I can plot my points. So my A prime is at negative 1, or sorry, negative 3, negative 9. A prime. My B prime is at three, positive three. There's my B prime. Make sure we label it. And I have negative three, negative three, positive nine is my C prime. And my last one, D prime is negative nine, positive three. And my final step is to connect it and I create this very, very, very large kite looking shape. And when we have something like this where we don't have any of the lines on a perfect horizontal or a perfect vertical, we can actually create one ourselves. 
So from D to B is a straight line. That's one, two, three, four units long. Four times the scale factor of three would be 12. So I wanna check and see is D prime to B prime 12 units. So I'm gonna make my ticks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12 units. So that's another way that we can check it. It doesn't have to be the outside lines. You can create your own horizontal or vertical straight line to count how many units across it is to see if it is multiplied by the same scale factor to check to make sure we didn't make any errors. After this, there are two other practice pages, dilated coordinates, T2 sheet one, T2 sheet two, sorry, T2 sheet two, T2 sheet three, are extra practice problems if you have the, um, if your teacher has them printed out and given to you, or if you wanna go and get the membership at mathworksheetsforkids.com, and all the answers are there as well because this is about extra practice problems and just really honing in on your skills. Thank you for completing another YouTube with Lubelski. Please continue to do other activities and worksheets to strengthen your abilities for future assessments that may come up. Have a wonderful day. You can turn it off now. No, really, you can turn it off.